So guys, welcome to Miss Reche in YouTube channel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. I am Mackenzie Lemiri, mm -hmm. and I'm from a town called St. George, Utah, mm -hmm. in the U.S. And now we're here in Kenya, in Meru, in Gondone. Yeah. I'm George Kenya Lemiri. Um, I'm Kenyan. I'm a Meru. I'm in Meru. I'm in Gondone, Meru, where my my father was born and and raised. So pretty much this makes me. Um, this makes um, this makes me be in my ancestral home. So um, we're surrounded by a lot of my family. Some of my ancestors are born around close to us. So yeah, I'm in my ancestral home. Okay. Yeah. So Mackenzie, please tell us how was it growing up in. Utah in the US? Um, growing up in Utah was great. It's a beautiful place. Um, I'm the oldest of five kids. So there was, we, and we lived in like a suburban um, town, smaller towns, not too big. Um, and yeah, childhood was great. I went to school, regular public school. Um, did lots of activities as a kid, like sports and dancing and music lessons. So we stayed very active and busy growing up. And yeah, childhood was great. I love Utah. It's a really great place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, Judge? I grew up, well, I was born in Embu. I was born in Embu. Uh, my first portion of my life, I was, I was in Embu. I went to... Embu County Primary. Um, I was speaking Kiembu the first portion of my life until I was in class four. And then we moved back to Meru. Um, I believe my parents met when they were in Embu, when they were both working in Embu. So that's how I was born in Embu and, you know, kind of first portion was in Embu. We moved to Meru and we stayed close to Meru town, Kenaru area, Getoro area. That's where we were living in uh, rented houses as a child. And most of my childhood, I spent my childhood going to my grandma's uh, place in Kibritia. That was in my mom's side. Um, I loved, uh, I loved her. She was, you know, she was one of my favorite grandmas. So I spent most of my childhood there. So that's 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 about it about my childhood and okay. where I was born and raised. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I went to high school in Meru, primary school. Went to Meru primary, uh, and then from there I went to ABC. And then things happened, I ended up finding myself in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> I find myself... Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So please tell us how you went to U.S. Okay. and when. I went to U.S. in 2005. Mm -hmm. um, end of 2005, I, after, finishing, uh, after finishing high school, um, I went there through Kilimimuria. There was a program that Kilimimuria had for for students that had passed exam to go study ab uh, abroad. So I, I did not know the details. I, at the time, I was at my grandma's place in Kibritia, and my mom came and told me, "Come fill out this form. For, it's for school." I just filled them up. I had no idea um, where U.S. was. I mean, I knew on the map, but I, I didn't really care about going to U.S. I, I wasn't. I wasn't the type of the, uh, student that all their life they wanted to go study there. I wasn't. I was completely Kianyeji. All I knew is I, was, <laughs> I just finished school. Go. The only dream I had was to go to Kenyatta University, KU. That's that's what I had. So I was 100% Kianyeji. And then here my mom comes with form, fill them out, sign. That's what I did. She took them away. Mm -hmm. And then a couple months later, she was like, oh, you got accepted. Now you have to go to visa. And not stepped in Nairobi. That was my first time going to Nairobi. Uh, I, was, I went to Nairobi two times. No, actually one, 
two times and then I left Kenya. <laughs> the first time was to go to, for the visa, the second time I was out. Okay. Yeah, so. so you went to the US for school? S for school. I went there for school. Okay, yeah. that is in 2005. Yeah, end of 2005. Okay, yeah. please tell us uh, the process, like uh, what you were expecting, what was going through your mind. Actually, I was not expecting anything. I was just blank. Mm -hmm. I was 100% Kenyan, I had no idea. I couldn't speak English well. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the English I had was the written English and you know, you know. And then, then you know, my, my English was translating it to Kimeru first and then I answer myself in my head in Kimeru. <laughs> then I translate that Kimeru back to English. So if you are speaking to me in English, it'll take a couple of seconds or a couple of few minutes for me to answer back because I have my own process. I have to translate back to Kimeru, answer it and then translate back and then try to figure out which English words I can use. So it was when I got there, um, it was hard because I went to the southern part of US, Georgia. Georgia. Technically, they don't, it's, it's, it's a southern... Mm -hmm. Thick accent. Thick accent. And it's not English. It's, it's pretty much not English. <laughs> so my English is the British written English, the one yeah. I read in my... Mm -hmm. When I went there, it was a different type of English. It took me six months to be able to respond back to people. So, um, so I was doing... Mm, mm, <laughs> so, so that's, so that's all. <laughs> So which university did you? Uh, I went to Georgia College and State University. It's mm -hmm. in a small town called Milledview. Uh, it's like two hours from Atlanta, Georgia. About that, 30 minutes from Macon, Georgia. Macon is a much bigger town. Mm -hmm. So Milledview is a smaller town. I think it had about 5,000 students. Very few black students in that mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. So I really did stand out. So what were you going to study? I was a pre-med student, biology and chemistry major. Uh -huh. So that's what I went there for. Uh -huh. I had dreams, uh -huh. but those dreams uh -huh. changed. <laughs> uh -huh. So impression, yeah. now you're in America, what shocked you most? Food. Food, Food shocked me. I, I did not know what hamburgers were, I did not know what pizza was. I'm a village kid. <laughs> I know rice, mokimo, giveri, doma, uh, doma <laughs> sweet potatoes. <laughs> and then I'm finding a parata of food stuff that I have no idea. So I ate rice and beans for the first few months. Mm -hmm. And then and then I made a mistake of uh, tasting a cheeseburger <laughs> and I fell in love. You know, like McDonald's had this double stack cheeseburger. Uh -huh. I ate it the first time I was in love. Oh, you were. Like every Friday, like I used to work on campus. Every Friday we get paid. The first thing I'll do to myself is buy myself a cheeseburger. I think I was number four, number five on the <laughs> menu. That's the first thing I did with my first paycheck. Since then, I oh, started falling in love with that food. Oh. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm. Now studying in the US, you studied for four years or three years? Yes, I studied, uh, well, I studied for two years in Georgia. And then in those two years, I started looking around, you know, because, you know, our mentality going to school, like what our parents taught us is go to school, study hard, uh, graduate, get a job, work for 40, 50 years, retire, come. And die. Yeah, so, so <laughs> that, 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 that's what I knew. But then after one year, I started looking around looking around at what people are doing. And I started realizing, yes, that's a great path for someone, yes, you need education. But I started realizing that people that are making a really good living without that traditional route. And then that's when I started doing my research, I started looking into business, and that's what I realized. A lot of people in the US that make a lot of money are actually business people, like mm -hmm. they employ themselves. Mm -hmm. That's where my mind started changing a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then my perspective of go to school, work hard, finish, get your master's, finish, get a job, work for four years, started fading away. Yeah. And you know, that's where it all started. And then within two years, um, being in Georgia, um, I transferred from Georgia, went to Nevada. So I just choose the farthest. I, I looked at the map. Mm -hmm. I'm in Georgia, the southern part, and I wanted to go the farthest from the south, southern part. So I looked on the far end. I could see California, Nevada. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm going to go there. Okay. So I transferred myself there and I moved myself there. And down the line, that's where we met. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. <clears throat> so yeah. what did you go to do in Nevada? I transferred school. Oh, it's yeah, it was a school I was transferred. The, the other reason <clears throat> of transferring, as much as my mindset was changing mm-hmm. about all this uh, life mm-hmm. route, um, I was thinking of becoming a neurosurgeon. So I chose Nevada because uh, there's a school that's about a few hours. It's still in Nevada, mm-hmm. but it's in northern Nevada, uh, Reno, a small town called Reno. So the university is the University of Nevada, Reno. Uh, knew they had a great neurosurgeon program there. Like it was well known throughout the whole the whole country, mm-hmm. uh, not just uh, Nevada. Mm-hmm. So I knew it was because I wanted to pursue become a neurosurgeon. Uh, I, I, I had chosen a few schools that I knew would be a good fit for me if I'm transferring. So that's why I got went to Nevada because I knew I can transfer quickly to mm-hmm. or go to for for that you know very easy because the same state. So that's why I moved myself there. <laughs> and also at that time I was also curious about party life. When you're young and I'm looking I'm like Nevada, Las Vegas is a party city. <laughs> so I want to be party boy, yeah. I need to go there. So that's the other reason of transferring there. Okay. So, Sin City. Yeah, it's called Sin City. So, so it was ba- fun. So back to you, Mackay. That was wonderful. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you were born in Utah, right? Mm-hmm. Utah, yeah. What did you go to do? Why did you move to Nevada or what did you... Oh, so Utah and where I lived in Utah is the very corner. And then Las Vegas is only two hours away. Okay. So Nevada is right there, mm-hmm. bordering Utah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it, going to Las Vegas was something that we did a lot growing mm-hmm. up. It wasn't far away. Mm-hmm. So he was living in Las Vegas. I was living with my parents. Mm-hmm. Um, I had gone to university and decided it wasn't the route I wanted to go. So I only completed like a year and then went back trying to figure out what I was going to do. And then that's when we met. Okay. Yeah. So please tell us how you guys met. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, how did we meet? So, like I said, I had come home from university and I was, I had gone to study musical theater and dance. So, like I said, I grew up dancing, doing music, singing, playing the piano and all these um, things involving music. And so I thought that's the route I wanted to take. <clears throat> so I went to study in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at a conservatory for musical theater and dance. Uh, decided I wanted to take a different route, but I still wanted to do music um, and sing and focus more on the singing aspect. And so I was home trying to figure out what my path was. And it just so happens that he had started his own music record label in Las Vegas. And so the school that he was going to, UNLV, I had a mutual, we had a mutual friend because I had a friend I grew up with that was that knew George and that was going to UNLV as well. So she introduced us because he was looking for someone to do music projects and singing projects with. He was looking for an artist, you know, and I was looking for something to do with music. So Didn't know what. what. Uh-huh. So she introduced us. I think the first time we talked to was like on Facebook, right? Yeah, it's we'll probably like Facebook, Facebook Messenger or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And he just started asking me questions about music and if I'd be interested in, you know, meeting and Mm -hmm. linking up basically. And that's how it happened. And the first time we met in person, I drove to Vegas. I think we, did we go to... Chinese buffet. I took on a date on Chinese buffet. Oh yeah, we went out for Chinese food, first of all, but Mm -hmm. also we discussed a lot of music stuff. Mm -hmm. And And from now the first meeting in person. Yeah, that was Mm -hmm. the first meeting in person. We had talked over the phone quite a bit and messaging but that was the first time meeting in person and then yeah from that point on like we were pretty inseparable like we just spent so much time together Mm -hmm. doing projects making music we have a few songs that we did yeah we, in a, she performed studio. in new york mm-hmm. she performed in california mm-hmm. she performed around vegas i performed at a some African wedding, but yeah. what was it? It's a Somali, Somali wedding. wedding or something. We, I had some Somalia friends when I was living yeah. in Las Vegas, so she went and performed at a, wed- a wedding. Yeah. Uh, we performed in LA, uh, Hollywood, uh, couple couple clubs. We performed there. We went we flew to New York, mm-hmm. performed at the radio station. Yeah. She performed. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I was yeah. the back end like producer. He was like the business producer the business. side, mm-hmm. and I was the singer mm-hmm. side. So you guys started as like 
partners in terms of like work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, we started yeah. by making music. Okay. I was looking for an artist, like she said, that I'd started a local record label when I was in And why Vegas. music and you were in biology and neurosurgery? But yeah, like I said, <laughs> you know, when I was, the reason I transferred, part of it was also like my mindset had changed. Okay. So I started looking at businesses uh, that I can start, that I, that I can do. <laughs> and then having, having had transferred to Las Vegas, I was hanging out with a lot of people, a lot of people in the music industry. I even I hanged out with people like Suge Knight, the one the one who was the manager for Tupac. We hanged mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. I was around them, I was around that music mm -hmm. scene. And I started learning the music industry and I was like, I like this, mm -hmm. I like this. And then I started making beats and I was I was really good at making those instrumentals. And I was like, like, I can do them. Oh. Right now, I'll, I'll take a couple of days and I'll, but I'll get back to it. I, I know my head can, <laughs> can catch it real quick. If I get back if you give me those i'll make your beat within two three days but i need time i need to focus mm. but i was making good beats too so that's what we did i started running around the las vegas local music scenes around rappers uh, lay around lap rappers and stuff like that so i started becoming really good at it i started getting to know the industry people so we had uh, we had a distribution deal with a recording company uh, in, in 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 la so that's how I, I got into it and before you knew it within a few months i was in love with the music industry mm -hmm. and then i was like oh we're going for this and then i started looking for an artist that can sing and i had a friend her friend, like she said, the um, you know, I was like, do you know any girl that can sing? I'm looking for a girl that can sing. At that time, I had a rapper. There was a guy that I had that was rapping, so we were doing stuff, stuff with him. But what I needed was a, was a singer, like a female, a female voice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. so you've started working together. Mm -hmm, huh? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we started Take working. Take us the next step. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next step. It was honestly a blur because yeah. it. Well, first of all, he came on to me immediately. <laughs> She like after fine. how long? She looked fine. After how long? After um, first sight. <laughs> you, you no, know, after, you no, no, after to... first sight. I mean, if, you, if, uh -huh. if you see, just, you see. Now. You don't pretend. <laughs> if you see something good, you're like, ooh, I like uh, what yeah. I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was very straightforward. Mm -hmm. No, like, damn, and... girl, you look good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, turn around. I don't want to see oh you. Oh, my turn God. Around. <laughs> <laughs> so that was me. Yeah. At that time, that was me. He was, and for me, I was not used to that mm -hmm. type of energy. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it I took me a little forward. longer, but mm -hmm. he he grows on you when you're around. <laughs> yeah, I was straightforward. He grew on me, uh, and yeah. we were 100 percent straightforward. You okay. like it, you don't like it. That's that's me. That's what you get. <laughs> okay. So you told her that on the first date that you guys met. The first few minutes. Minutes. <laughs> minutes. It wasn't even day. Uh -huh. Minutes. Like within. Two minutes. I was like, "Go, you look good." Uh -huh. And you didn't like the energy, right? <laughs> I just wasn't. Uh -huh. I don't know. I wasn't well, the, the, thing, the things that she didn't like before the is I sent her a picture. She's like, "Send me a picture." You remember that? No. Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> yeah, I sent her a picture. I took a selfie. Mm -hmm. I had those fake. I remember you sending Halloween. Me, but I don't remember hey. those, those, you know, there's Halloween there. Yeah. And I, I bought see. those fake southern teeth. Mm -hmm. And she told me to send me a picture so I can see how you look like. I took a selfie and sent her that with those grisly, mm -hmm. raggedy looking teeth. She did not respond for a couple of days. No, yes. that's exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I said she didn't like me at first <laughs> because I sent her this mouth that he I was just always weird. joking like he is right now. Yeah. Like joking. <laughs> just like a lot of energy and whatnot. But we worked well together and I I don't know. You know the term like opposites attract? Mm -hmm. I think that's what happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After how long did you start dating or seeing each other? Um, Romantically? Well, to give you a timeline that will explain how fast it went. It went from us meeting in person the first time, I think it was like February, mm -hmm, February. of 2012. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and December of 2012, we were married. So. Okay. That's how fast it went. Okay. It wasn't even a year. Araka, araka. Mapema and your best. Ah, una toka hapo. Okay, so after <laughs> meeting for the first time, like, you started Im dating immediately. I wouldn't say like, there wasn't really oh. ever like a moment that we're like, okay, we're dating now. It was just you kind just, of, we met mm -hmm. and we just spent so much time together mm -hmm. and it just kind of transitioned yeah, yeah. Okay. to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. We were spending a lot of time making beats in studios working. together, yeah. working, mm -hmm. traveling. She was yeah. coming down to St. George almost every Vegas, weekend, yeah. Vegas, mm -hmm. every weekend doing mm -hmm. projects. Mm -hmm. And then, he, said, and then he wanted to come 
see where I'm from mm -hmm. and it's only two hours away. So mm -hmm. then I think that was probably the moment it kind of like really transitioned for me is when he came and met like my family mm -hmm. and saw where I, like where yeah. I lived and where I was from. Okay. Yeah. So but it progressed really fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what made you guys realize that you want to be together with each other? Mm. Or what made you love? What do you love from her? It was first, uh, it was first love at first sight. Mm -hmm. But then it was just her uh, personality. Uh, and I was like, well, she can be a wife material. She mm -hmm. is a wife material. Yeah. So things just flowed from there. Okay. It wasn't, a, it wasn't like I was, I had a checklist mm. of the type of woman yeah. or wife mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. that didn't happen. What of physical attraction? What attraction? Oh, it was everything. Mm -hmm. Especially, it was everything. <laughs> everything <laughs> Especially the bootay. <laughs> mm, that's why I told her to turn around. I was like, damn. And that was, that was a damn, mm. a stretch damn. Andre, the oh, head. Like and you, Mackenzie. <laughs> what a... <laughs> that's what I did. For me, it was more just like, and energy and like his confidence mm. like i never met anyone as confident as yeah. him just in himself and i don't know something just about him being so different from me like just that opposite of like where he grew up on a completely different continent just like there was so much to him and and then his confidence and his big life dreams and goals that he had mm -hmm. I think that's where we matched up a lot, as we both had the ability to just think big and dream big and know that we wanted something to make something of our life. We didn't just want to do things traditionally um, and take the path that most people take. We kind of wanted to create our own, our own path. Okay. So I think that's what we really had in common. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you took her to your family members and parents, right? Oh, you yeah. took him? I took him, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. What was the reaction from your family they, and friends? Family and friends. They loved him right away, I think. Like, I'm trying to remember the very first time if it was just my, like, did I have siblings mm -hmm. that think, met you that first time? Yeah, I think my met him. I think, like, my youngest time. sister yeah. and my young, youngest brother met yeah. him. Yeah. But I mostly remember like my mom really just liked him and they were talking back and forth and having good conversation. And my mom's also someone that just can really appreciate like people from other cultures and other countries. And she was very interested in just getting to know him and learning about him. So. And then I'm not a shy person. Yeah. yeah. I might look, I'm shy, but no. I'm not a shy Oh, you're person. funny. That's <laughs> <you're> so funny. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah. it, was, it was easy to talk. Uh, at that time, I developed my English kind of well. <laughs> so, Nikoa <laughs> Panatosha, uh, but I have my accent. Though. I still have my Kenyan accent, my Kenyaji accent, my Meru Kenyaji yeah. accent. Mm -hmm. I still will keep it though. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So they, they all liked him. There was no problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you propose? I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. How was it? She said yes. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say maybe. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> She's now saying maybe mm. after 10 years. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, my her laugh for me is like, mm -hmm. um, Were you not afraid, afraid she might say no? Who? Right her? now? Uh, no, then. Then? Yeah, when you, while you're proposing. I think no. we, had, we had talked enough yeah, we had, about yeah, it. Yeah, we had talked about that it. That it wasn't really like a surprise. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, she's proposing. It was kind of just like a natural progression. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we had talked about like the future enough and we saw each other in the future that it just made sense. Yeah. To get married. Okay. Yeah. He proposed. Oh, yeah. Um, he mostly, he just asked, he, well, he talked to my dad. That's like what made it, I guess, official. He talked to my dad and asked permission to marry me. And after that happened, he he had a ring and he just, mm -hmm. he proposed, I think that like officially, mm -hmm. I think that later that night after, I didn't know he was asking my dad permission, but he was over at our, at my house mm -hmm. and they were talking in the, in the office. Mm -hmm with the door closed but there's like windows so i could see them and they're talking and it looked like a serious conversation so i didn't know what was going on really but um yeah and then i think that later that day is when 
we had a ring and everything was because I'm, I'm still an african you can't mm -hmm. you can't just propose yeah. to a girl without first getting permission from from the, a, dad. From, from the yeah. dad so Each that's other. what i yeah that's what i made sure i did is we had talked about possibility of getting married and all that but the first thing i had to do is go ask for permission from the dad so i'm still a true african what even was the reaction from the dad he was like, um, he looked at me, I was serious, and he's like, well, okay, like, you can marry her, it's your life, you guys can create your own life, mm -hmm. as long as you take care of her, mm -hmm. and I was like, I'll do my best, mm -hmm. and that was it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> my parents are friendly, they're not, they're not yeah. too, mm. they're not very tough people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you're preparing to get married, what was planning the wedding? It was it was all fast. It was a blur. Mm -hmm. It just happened, I, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> and we were in suits. She was in a, in a dress. Mm -hmm. She's saying I do. Mm -hmm. I'm saying I do. We are kissing. <laughs> we were driving away on a mm -hmm. car. The next thing we're living together. Have you informed your family back in Africa? Yes, I did inform yeah. them, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. but there was not enough time to get a visa for them to come. Okay. So we just go ahead and do it. What was their reaction when you told them you want to get a girl mm -hmm. from the US? They were like. First thing, my mom was like, is she a Christian? What kind of church she goes to? And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, she is. And, mm -hmm. she, and then she's like, okay, fine. You do what you gotta do. Okay. Oh, yeah. She's so like, as okay long as that. you bring grand grandkids. Uh -huh. oh. That's all she cared about. She's mm -hmm. like, all I want is grandkids. I'm like, I got you. And your African friends and relatives? Honestly? I didn't care about them. Mm -hmm. I was like, it's my, it's my marriage. Mm -hmm. It's my thing. Let's do it. Okay. Let's get it. Let's mm -hmm. get it over with it. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm not worried about what they're gonna think. <laughs> it's my wife. I'm okay. not marrying for them. It's not our wife. It's my wife. Yeah. Yeah. It's, my, it's not <laughs> their wife. It's my wife. Okay. So how was the how how was the wedding day? It, it was great. I was blind. You, you? I was blind. Uh -huh. No, no, no. I was literally blind. blind. I, I had these little baby glasses. Uh -huh. She didn't like them. Uh -huh. So she made me take them out. Uh -huh. So I didn't see anybody. Uh -huh. I, I'm used oh. to wearing glasses. Uh -huh. So I could barely see two feet. Uh -huh. So I was literally blind the uh -huh. whole wedding. I, I see videos to see the wedding, uh -huh. but I literally did not see anything of the wedding. And she had taken my glasses off. I can't have them okay. because kind of looked retarded and ugly with them. So she didn't want that look during the wedding. Okay. So I was right there like, like a blind bat. Mm -hmm. I do. Can't even see the person asking me to say. <laughs> She's out here crying. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the wedding was good. My my um, I had an auntie who helped like with all the planning and yeah. decorating, and she made it very beautiful. And it was winter in US, like December, so it was very cold. So we had it indoors at this really beautiful um, place. And yeah, it was really nice. We have, it was honestly such a blur. And like when I think back, I don't have, it's hard for me to rec recollect the day, but um, good thing we have videos and okay. stuff so yeah. that I can remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Especially for the blind person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now coming from Africa, yeah? Mm -hmm. African men or Kenyan men pay dowry to their wives. Yes. Did you give dowry to no, family? No, no, I did not give dowry because mm -hmm. uh, American culture, they don't care about dowry. Okay. They don't worry about that. So I guess I got off easy. <laughs> having that, having to pay millions of shillings. Like some dowry, I look at them, I'm like, I, if I was to pay this, I'm like, y'all can have your daughter. I, I am so sorry. I am not paying 2.5 million. And then we're going back to eat noodles. That, that is very unfair to men and, yeah. and the newly wedded couple. Mm -hmm. If I was African and marrying right now, I think the parents will have to marry their own daughters because yeah. I'll step off. It's actually so, it's actually so different in US mm -hmm. because how it works is generally the the bride the the girl the woman her family pays for the wedding so her family um gets everything like paid for from the 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 dress to the venue to the food to the catering everything is done by the woman's side the man basically just has to show up mm, he just show up to the wedding and say i do okay yeah. so it's very different oh i see <laughs> yeah yeah it's very different mm. but even if i was to get married today now like i said i wouldn't so I, 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 will not, I will not pay those two. Yeah. I am so sorry for yeah. the parents yeah. that, that believe that mm -hmm. they need to be yeah. paid back yeah. for everything they spent on their daughter yeah. but that's not fair because yeah. these two married couple 
They spent everything and given to their parents. Now, what are, they, what are they going to start their family with? Nothing, zero. Like, like the point is not to enslave kids. The point is to make sure the next generation uh, has something for themselves and they can build themselves up, not just empty everything yeah. to their parents. The parents mm -hmm. are living like kings. Mm -hmm. Then kids are in the house eating noodles and drinking water, tea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is unfair. <laughs> so how was it again? How was it for you yeah. getting married in US with no family members and I was um, home? It was fine until there was and, and, and uh, was it a video showing? Yeah, it was a yeah. video that we made. Yeah. That had like pictures of his family yeah. and his parents, and he started, oh, okay. he yeah, started it, crying. It was fine mm -hmm. until I started seeing the pictures of my mom, my dad, my family. That's when I cried actual tears Ooh. because I started imagining I'm getting married, even my mom is not here. Okay. So yeah. I had tears coming uh, down. Okay. So I think that's one of the few times I've actually cried in real, in real life. Mm. I rarely cry, but that, I cried. Oh. Like real tears were coming emotional. down. It mm. was very emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's the only thing that hit me that day, is realizing I'm getting married and my mom is not here. Mm -hmm. My dad is not here. My family is not mm -hmm. here. So yes, I did cry. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Before meeting Mackenzie, were you dating in America? Like white girls or black girls? Oh me. Yeah. <laughs> Answer. <laughs> it was yes, I was dating uh -huh. here and there, uh -huh. back and forth. Mm -hmm. Depends, depend, yeah. dependent. Yeah. I did with did a few, you can say a few white girls and maybe one black girl. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I would answer that in detail. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever dated a black guy before him? Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now you get, now you, you married now. Uh, you moved to his, uh, state. My little apartment. Yeah, in oh, Vegas. Okay. Yeah, it was a little apartment, one bedroom apartment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, now kids have started coming after how long? Oh, Somebody? immediately. <laughs> immediately. She got pregnant possibly the, the first week or even the first, the, the Even the day we, the honeymoon day, she probably got okay. pregnant that day. Okay. Because by the end of we the were month. married December 14th. Yeah. And I found out I was pregnant on New Year's Day. Yeah. Okay. So pretty much maybe the mm -hmm. night of our yeah. wedding, that's yeah. when she got pregnant. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was fast. The baby started arriving fast. Mm -hmm. And we had to slow down on music because now yeah. she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. We had to figure out a few things, but mm -hmm. that's when we started our family almost okay. immediately. Okay. Yeah. And how was it for you in Mali because of intercultural differences? Mm -hmm. How was it? At Adjusting it. I think the main argument we had was about AC, like the cooling system in the house. That was the main argument we had, like almost every day. Why? She liked the temperature cold. Uh -huh. I wear a jacket, you know how I like my temperature? Yes. On the harder side. Mm -hmm. So she dropped that to cold, and then I, I, and then few minutes I'm like, I'm freezing. I went and put back up to high. Then she puts it down, so that was a whole lot of argument <laughs> about temperature inside the house. Mm. Because she liked the cold, I like it hot. Mm -hmm. so I still like it cold. Okay. I still like it hot. Okay. So we still have arguments about it. But in the beginning it was more because these were two different people that mm. have never stayed with yeah. each other. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of getting even touch. loud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we just, um, that was probably a specific thing, but just having two people that were raised two very different ways. Yeah used to two very different types of cultures um you do butt heads you mm -hmm. know you, you clash yeah. sometimes mm -hmm. but i think we've just slowly figured out like okay what things are worth arguing about or what things you know or what things can we just accept this person is different in this way i'm different in this way make it work okay. you know so communication helped yeah, yeah. and my male anger was still there, still is. So I found a way to always learn how to calm myself or work it out. Like if I mm -hmm. get really pissed, I His either go swing, and then I, I just work it out. Okay. So I'm still a meru, my temper does you have to go. Your it goes from zero to hundred sometimes, mm. quick, 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 like <laughs> snap. Like. But then, I don't look like that. Yeah. It's there, it's there. She can tell you it's there. Yeah. I just find ways to manage it. I find ways to 
if I feel it, I just work it out. Like yeah. work out. She also knows if I'm get mad and I work out, she, mm -hmm. you know, she. There's let no him, point of him cool following me. Just yeah. let me go. Okay. And then I'll cool off and come back smiling. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, honeymoon. Um, we didn't go far. We just what we did was we just stayed in a. It was like a resort spa place that was in the same town. Okay. Mm. Oh. That we got married in. Yeah. So we didn't go anywhere like super exciting. But with weddings in US, I don't know if this is the same here. Do people give gifts like money mm. to the couple? I think they do. There's like a lot of um, all the guests that come to your wedding, they usually will give you money as a gift. Mm -hmm. And so I think the day, like two oh, days I after, mm -hmm. yeah, like two days after we got married, we went shopping together with that money and bought a bunch of things for our house like cookware and you know things that yeah. we needed to start our life so that was kind of we didn't have a big extravagant honeymoon okay. we just had we're a, just young two young people yeah, yeah. That trying to figure out life <laughs> mm. yeah so you got married in 20 2012 2012 yes. and your first child alive in 20 2013 2013 august okay yeah. so did you bring her to Africa. No, she came. We came to Africa 2016. 2016 first. We already had like two four, kids, yes. and I was pregnant with the third. Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, please tell us how it was. You came in from uh, US mm -hmm. to Africa for the first time. Um, it was amazing, mm -hmm. and it was a very long journey, <laughs> like to get here on the planes and everything. We had two small babies and I was pregnant. So it was amazing. It was great meeting all his family for the first time. Um, that was really special. And we went around and met like a lot of his relatives. Um, so it was a lot of that. And then we did go to Masai Mara and did a safari for a few days. So I got to see and do a lot and meet a lot of people. And it was, that was the first time he had been back here. Mm -hmm. In, since, since he went to US. Mm -hmm. So it was a big, just happy oh. reunion. Oh. That was just a visiting. Mm -hmm. So we didn't move here. We okay. were just visiting for six weeks. Six weeks. I think we've, we've, we had made that decision almost since 2013. Mm -hmm. you know, it's something that we were talking about that one day we are going to move to Kenya and raise our kids here. Mm -hmm. It's a conversation we were having throughout those years before mm -hmm. we even visited. Yeah. So it's something that she was comfortable with knowing that one day we will move to Kenya. Yeah. And, and I think that's the one thing that really helped her be okay with moving to Kenya because it's a conversation we had throughout time. It's not something that I woke up one day and said, let's go to I Kenya. Go back home. Yeah. Yeah, she would be like, why? Why? No, I'm not going. But she, but she never did that because it's something that we, it was both of us deciding, not to me saying what I want to do. Yeah. So that's that's why it was easier. And then we moved back in 2019 or 2020, 2019. Mm -hmm. Moved back in 2019. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Why did you decide to move back? What was the reason behind it to move back and raise your mm. kids in Africa? The reason is, part of it is business. It's my mindset. Yeah. Remember my mindset and change about the traditional way of uh, doing life. Yeah. And then um, having having being born and raised in Kenya and, and knowing what Kenya is, Kenya is a developing country. There's a lot of opportunities in yeah. Kenya. Uh, places like America, they already yeah. developed. In terms of business, yes, you can go start a business and be successful, but most times you are chances of failing are very high because it has already developed uh, uh, country or industry. Yeah, all in, industry in every, are developed. In every sector. You're, you know, there's, there's barely in any small scale businesses. Mm. They are all huge multinational companies. You cannot compete with that in business. So a place like Kenya, um, a developing country, mm. almost every single industry is now starting up. So there's a huge opportunity when it comes to business and growth and making money. So that was one of the motivation. Having had that mindset change to uh, where we need to work for ourselves and where when we look at things, we see opportunities, especially in terms of making money. So that's where I started from and knowing that in Kenya, there are several industries that we can go and get started in and make a good living and maybe create wealth in it. And after visiting Kenya, I went to Masai Mara and the amount of money we 
paid to have that experience. I was like, that is a lot of money. We can make money in this industry, in this business. And we from Kenya, we're doing this. So that was one of the ideas I started. Also, the fact that I grew up in rural Meru, Kebericia, with my grandparents. I loved farming. So at heart, I'm a farmer. Uh, if there's any place, uh, someone will ever find me, it's inside the farm. I love farming. So we decided to come back to Kenya. To and start. then also the aspect of just raising our kids yes. here because yes, we wanted him, we wanted our kids to have to know both sides of their mm -hmm. family and, mm -hmm. and who they are, their DNA mm -hmm. and and both cultures and it's just such a wholesome lifestyle here for kids, um, not having to worry about a lot of the things you deal with mm -hmm. in in US. Mm -hmm. um, just being able to have a childhood where they're carefree and they can run and be in nature and also have their mind open that there's us is not the only place on the planet there's other countries there's other people there's other cultures there's other mm -hmm. foods there's other ways of yeah. doing things yeah and more i'm also i didn't want when my kids are old i'm trying to tell them stories of where they come from like uh, you come from Meru, your grandmother used to be this. I didn't want to do that. I want them to experience themselves mm -hmm. so that they grow up with that experience in knowing my dad was from Kenya. I will grew up in Kenya. A portion of my life was in Kenya. A portion of my life was in the US. I experienced both cultures. Then I can choose the person to be after having those two experiences. Yeah. Please tell us how was parenting in US and Africa, especially for the next kids? What do you mean for the next kids? For mm -hmm. our kids? For me, kids. kids. Uh, how was parenting in the US and now you're in Africa? Uh, what's the difference? For us, there's no difference. Kids. For us, there's no difference in terms of how we treat our kids. Uh -huh. We treat them the same mm -hmm. way we are treating them in the US in mm -hmm. terms of uh, they need to be disciplined in terms mm -hmm. of this, those specific things as a parent you want your child to have, like discipline, uh, listen to your parents, mm -hmm. listen to elders and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So we haven't changed our parenting And style. even even in US, we homeschooled our kids. Yes. Okay, yeah, so we've just homeschooled kind of, them, yeah. 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 So it's been pretty much the same parenting here and there. It's just um, the environment is what's changed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know if it's when I read from internet, I see when you're black or are mixed mm -hmm. in the US, it's a big challenge mm -hmm. raising boys there. Is it true? Well, I, I wouldn't say it's a bit challenging because ours are small kids, okay. so they depend okay. on us 100%. Oh, okay. So we, we were now worried about where they're going, where they're not going. We're homeschooling them so we can see them throughout the day. Mm -hmm. We know what they're doing, mm -hmm. we know where they're spending their time, mm -hmm. um, uh, where they're spending their time. So we have, we can ask it. Other people might have those challenges. Yeah. We we we, can, we we don't have them. We never had them because mm -hmm. our kids are where we can control their environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so we didn't really have like at first hand experiences, mm -hmm. but of course people do experience okay. those kinds of things. Yeah. But also, so you moved you moved in Kenya in twenty nineteen, right? Yes. With how many first. kids? Three. All three of them. <laughs> so both all all your kids were born in America. Yes. How did you prepare them to transition now from uh, America to to Kenya? Um, Mentally just, and then they maybe just, yet they another just life came, there. They were so small mm -hmm. that like two of them were still in diapers okay. in Pampers mm -hmm. when we first, right? Yeah, yeah, when we first showed up. So they were small enough that they're very moldable. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna feel too much of their life changing. They're just here with mommy and daddy, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So their main, but, their main focus in life, even right now, is mom and dad. And it's dad. now yeah. our environment. Okay. So moving here with them was easy because it was, because they are, like she said, they are more double, they will listen to what other moms. And there, there's definitely things like, so we went back to US for two years during yeah. COVID. Yeah. Um, just because we didn't quite have all our roots planted here yet. Okay. And we wanted to just, you know, go back okay. because of all the unknowns. And, um, but when we came back this time mm -hmm. in 2022, okay, um, they're old enough now where they definitely know the difference. They, there's things that they miss about U.S. that they talk about, but then when we're in U.S., there's things they miss about Kenya. Mm -hmm. So I think they're just developing a really like well-rounded mm -hmm. 
uh, worldview mm -hmm. and they just know that things operate different here. Mm -hmm. There's certain things we do in US that we don't do here. There's certain things, you know, so mm -hmm. they're just, they, they know there's a difference. Mm -hmm. They know there's, they have two different countries that they call home. Okay. Yeah. How do they adapt in terms of weather? Weather? Weather has not been the hardest. I would say the biggest adapting thing is like the food. Okay. Every time we spend time here and then go back, there's an adjustment. And every time we're there and come here, there's an adjustment. Um, but they adapt well. They are yeah. doing well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have plans to go back to America, maybe? Personally, no. Mm -hmm. Other than visiting. Um, yes, <laughs> I definitely want a home in both places. Mm -hmm. Um, because both places are home. Mm -hmm. The same way, if we were stayed in U.S., he would feel a longing mm -hmm. for back, for yeah. home. Yeah. Um, I'm not like I want us to be able to just have easy access to both places, homes in both places, and yeah. Okay. Yeah. So personally, um, other than going to visit there, the stay for a couple of weeks and come back. Uh, personally, I'll, I'm more Kenyan. I'll stay here more, okay. um, unless uh, when you know when she wants to go there for a holiday so that the kids and herself can spend time with her family. That's okay. I can go visit there and come uh, back. Uh, but for me, I'm a I'm, I'm, I'm hundred percent Kenyan. I'll spend most of the time. Okay. Before we, we start the um We're just happy. <laughs> we love life here, and we like being in the village areas we love all the fresh air and the nature and we love that we can there's so many things to see here and to experience here and nairobi is just a drive away you can then you're in a city with a lot of things that you don't get in the village and then if you want to go to the beach area and the coast it's just a you know a quick journey there and Kenya is just amazing. Okay. So, George, what mm. advice do you have for parents who are raising their kids back in the US mm. and they want to move to Kenya but they don't know where to start? Mm. From? Don't overthink it. Yes. Most people overthink stuff. Uh, just make a decision you want to move to Kenya, um, have a conversation with your spouse if your spouse is from uh, from um, from US or from where you you live currently. Talk to them first. Don't 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 wake up and say we are moving to Kenya tomorrow. You're gonna get resistance. Have a conversation with them after a few weeks, months. Tell them what you'd like to do. You'd want them to go experience that as well. Have it be a conversation first rather than a dictatorship. We move into Kenya next year and we're going. Okay. You do that, you are gonna get a resistance from your partner. Okay. Uh, when it comes to kids, if they are older enough high you know high school age 10 years plus those kids you have to talk to them it's also a conversation you cannot force things because they've grown the biggest major chunk of their life where they are they consider their their home their friends so them losing that mm -hmm. will be a lot of resistance mm -hmm. so even that have a conversation when they are little five and under that's not really a conversation those are daddy mommy's kids they'll do whatever they want you guys will say let's do they'll go to the moon if that's where you want to go <laughs> So that's not a worry point of view. Um, other than that, just don't overthink it. Just do it. Just plan your finances. Figure out what you're going to do once you get to Kenya because that's a challenge. No matter how much money you are going to save, it's going to run out at some point. So, mm -hmm. so start thinking of where to start an income in, inside Kenya. If you have a business over there ongoing, then it's easier for you. you don't technically have to worry too much quickly about starting a business in Kenya since you have finances coming from there. But at the end of the day, plan yourself, both financially, physically, mentally. Especially just mentally. Just take it, a step at yeah, a time. Kenya doesn't flow the way fast world countries flow. Okay. Yeah, just know that. And Mackenzie, before we end, what message do you have for an American woman who is married to a Kenyan guy? What they should expect when they run here? What they should expect? Um, expect everything to be different <laughs> in every single way mm -hmm. and be okay with that. Like? Be okay with starting fresh. Like from everything like just the pace of this country is much slower moving and much less um just 
moving really fast in every way. You have to just have patience. You have to appreciate it for what it is and not try to always compare it to where you came from or else you're just going to give yourself headaches <laughs> because it is so different. So you just have to be patient with yourself, be patient with the adjustments, give yourself a full year to adjust um, before you even start making a decision on how you how you feel, how you're liking your experience, because you can't just be here for a week. You're and if you if you're judging your experience off of one week, you're gonna want to go back home because everything's gonna be overwhelming. It's gonna be different. It's gonna be you're gonna feel all sorts of ways. But give yourself a whole year and then decide how you feel about your move. It takes that long to adjust. Okay. Yeah. okay, so when it comes to the other business we, we do, uh, aside from farming, it's limited travels. We have a tour company that, uh, that we get clients and take them throughout Kenya. The people can book with us through Facebook or through our email, limitedtravels at gmail.com. Uh, Facebook uh, also is limited travels, and you can also message us on WhatsApp at 0707-843614. Um, uh, with Remedy Travels, our main aim is to show people the beauty of Kenya and mm -hmm. to show them around. Which uh, people? Anybody. Yeah, anybody that want to travel and experience travel. International, local. Clients. Mm -hmm. yeah. local, local clients. We do day trip as well for local people, uh, local clients. So just reach out to us and um, yeah, mm -hmm. we, we love having and taking guests all over Kenya. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. So if people want to follow more of your stories, where can they get you? You can find us on YouTube. YouTube. Um, Mackenzie in Kenya is my channel. Mm -hmm. And we, I do a lot of documenting of just our daily life. And yeah, mm -hmm. I post every week. Mm -hmm. I think she even has a TikTok. Yeah, I'm on TikTok, on Instagram, but YouTube is like our main. Okay. So what uh, is your Mackenzie in Kenya's YouTube. Mackenzie Lamiri mm -hmm. is my TikTok. Mm -hmm. Mackenzie in Kenya Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if, if people want to know <laughs> more about farming and travel, <laughs> they'll, see, they'll see everything <laughs> with him on the Yeah, blog. they are going to see it on Mackenzie's blog. My Facebook, Instagram are just a hard mess. Okay. I post whatever I want to post. Okay. I, mine is now okay. for anything. Okay. <laughs> Please subscribe to my channel, Mackenzie and Kenya, and please subscribe to this channel right here as well. It's Reggie. Bye. 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 Bye.